everybody. Welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we are talking holiday movies. I tried to get a variety of different holidays um, represented here that didn't really work out as well as I had hoped. I always pick movies that the library owns so that I'm not recommending things that you can't actually get from us. And we don't own much in the way of non-Christmas um, holiday movies. So this year, it's going to be all Christmas, but we're definitely going to work on that moving forward. If you celebrate Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah. We're in the middle of Hanukkah right now. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I tried to break them down kind of by category. So um, I, you know, I try to make it easy on all of us. Um, so you'll, you'll see. Um, we're starting out with family movies, movies about families with Meet Me in St. Louis that has Judy Garland in it. Um, and this is about a family in St. Louis just before the World's Fair opens in St. Louis. It follows them over a year um, from the year before the fair opens. And the family is, you know, they're happy, they're living their lives, all that jazz. And um, at Halloween, the father announces that he's got a great new job opportunity, and they're leaving St. Louis. And that's horrible for everyone. They're very upset. He expects them to be really happy, and they're not. And so you get to see all of that happen in this. It, like I said, it takes place over a year the main part of the action is at Christmas, so it's not totally a Christmas movie, but it's still, it still, it gives you all the Christmassy movie vibes that I, I think make it qualify as a Christmas movie. The song Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas uh, was first recorded for this movie, so if you like that song, maybe check out the movie. I, this is one of my favorites. I definitely recommend it. Some more dysfunction for you here is Four Christmases with Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. And they are a couple who go away every year to avoid all of the family drama. But this year, there's been bad weather. They are trapped at home having to spend Christmas with all of their various family members. And of course, shenanigans ensue there. Then we have Almost Christmas which has a large ensemble cast here. This one is about a patriarch who just wants for once for his family to get along for a holiday. And you know that's often much easier said than done. Um, I'm sure most of you have experienced at least a little bit of that at some point in your life. So if that sounds interesting I, you know, and entertaining, Almost Christmas is for you. Then we have Happy Christmas. It's got Anna Kendrick in it, and she plays a kind of troublemaker younger sister. And she moves in with her brother and his wife, who their life is on track, everything's great, and she moves in and brings trouble with her. So, again, that's something you probably relate to. Hopefully this is more fun than anything you've had along those lines. I love Anna Kendrick. I think she's really um, a fun actress. So happy Christmas. Get yourself some family dysfunction there. And then we're moving on to more of the romantic comedy couple sort of movies. We're going to start out with another old one, The Bishop's Wife. And this, um, this is a lovely movie. Basically, the the main couple have kind of they're they've distanced themselves from each other, and an angel comes down to try to resolve their marital difficulties, and it's it's very sweet. You may have seen um, the remake of it with Whitney Houston called The Preacher's Wife. Uh, that one is I don't know why they renamed it, but. It's pretty much the same story. So if you saw that one and you liked it, check out this one. If you haven't seen any of them, both of them are great. I like old movies, so I recommend this one, but they're both good. Then we have a classic, White Christmas. 
I had to include this one because it's possibly my most watched Christmas movie ever. My husband and I actually ended up spending a Christmas in Vermont because we've seen this movie so many times that we thought, Christmas in Vermont, that sounds nice. And it was, it was lovely. There was lots of snow. So if that's what you're looking for, then, you know, awesome. Um, White Christmas follows a um, show business, two show business teams, I guess, that end up kind of falling for each other over the holiday season in Vermont. And there is a lack of snow in Vermont that year, which there was not when I was there. But um, this is a wonderful movie. The song White Christmas, this is not where it originated. It actually originated in Holiday Inn, which I am not including in this because, first of all, it's not a Christmas movie. It, it's like every holiday movie. But second of all, there are some, um, some issues, some super racist issues, um, blackface scenes, things like that, that I don't want to recommend. Um, but this is the second time the song White Christmas was put into a movie and this one is a delight. And then we have Last Christmas. I know when we get them from um, Bethlehem, they put their stickers over the top. We do own all of these movies. We just, I can't always get our copies in time to record. So, <laughs> but this is Last Christmas and I don't know what this one's about. I haven't seen it, let's see. A uh, heartfelt romantic comedy that is Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones. Uh, she doesn't look nearly as intimidating as she does when she's the mother of dragons. Um, but she works as an elf at a year-round holiday shop. And she's met a whole bunch of guys that just bad choices, basically. And then she meets this really nice guy, and he challenges her entire worldview. That sounds lovely. I might watch that. <laughs> So if that's kind of what you're looking for, a little, probably a little bit closer to Hallmark kind of movies, this is, um, this might be right up your alley. And then one more, The Perfect Holiday, which has uh, Gabrielle Union in it. I feel like she's in so many movies. Uh, but she's in this one, and um, all she wants for Christmas is to meet a nice guy. I mean, I'm sure there are people who can relate to that too, right? There's a bunch of Hallmark movies like that too. Um, so she meets this guy. He does his best to make her dreams come true. Wonderful, romantic, very sweet. Then we're moving on. I'm going to call this section shenanigans, holiday shenanigans. First up, I'll Be Home for Christmas with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Do you guys remember this movie? This movie's from when I was, like, middle school, maybe? Anyway. Um, JTT is super self-centered, and um, he wakes up in the desert wearing a Santa suit and only has a few days to get to Christmas dinner, or he's going to forfeit a vintage Porsche. I, you know, okay, that's not what Christmas is about, probably, but if that's what he really wants to do. Obviously, shenanigans ensue because he woke up in the desert wearing a Christmas suit. Like, forget that he's on a deadline and all of that. Why is he in the desert in a Christmas suit? You gotta watch the movie, see how it turns out. Next up, a newer one, A Bad Mom's Christmas. I have not seen the Bad Mom's movies, so I can't um, tell you a whole lot about them. But basically, they're about um, overburdened mothers and what they call the Super Bowl for moms, which is Christmas, because it is often the mom's job to make the season magical for children. So this follows the bad moms over a Christmas. And then we have The Night Before, which has Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Seth Rogen and Anthony Mackie and um, they are a trio of friends who every year go all out with crazy um, stunts and, and whatnot to celebrate. And this is their last epic party, as it says. 
um, before they really, you know, settle down, become adults. So this is the ultimate shenanigans, holiday shenanigans movie. Um, <laughs> I love all these guys. They're, they're really fun. So if you're looking for just something fun, this is, this is a good one for you. Now we're going to move on, instead of family dysfunction, to like heartwarming family movies. First up with that is Prancer. A little girl finds an injured reindeer in the forest and thinks it's one of Santa's reindeer. And is trying to nurse him back to health, but her dad has other plans. It's sweet. It's heartwarming. Um, if you're about my age, you probably remember this movie as a kid. If you have kids, they'd probably love this movie. Then we have an animated one for you, Arthur Christmas. All of the kids in the whole world, except for one, get their Christmas presents. And Arthur, who is Santa's son, has to hustle to make sure that that kid doesn't miss out on Christmas. It's, it's really cute. I really like this movie. Uh, then an old one, Babes in Toyland with Annette Funicello. Um, I don't understand the premise of this movie. Basically, the bad guy decides that he wants to marry Annette Funicello, so he kidnaps her fiance, who is Tom Piper. She's Mary Contrary. She's engaged to Tom Piper. He just, the, the bad guy says, I'm gonna kidnap him so she'll marry me. Like, like that's ever worked. That doesn't work. Why do they do this? It's a bad plan. This is why villains fail, is because they have bad plans. They don't think them through. But it's a, it's a fun family movie um, if you're looking for something along those lines. This is another one that I watched and I was entertained, but I was, again, I was a little confused. Not about the plot, like I, it's fairly predictable, but I'm very familiar with the Nutcracker story and I was just like, why? What is happening? Um, it's fun though, it's, it's a fun movie. And it's set, um, there's, there's characters from all the different lands, from the Nutcracker, you've got the Land of Sweets, and you know, and all of those different characters are here in the movie. And Clara, the main character, um, has to discover the mysterious gift that her mother has left her by going into this magical world and fixing the issues that arise. And not everything is as it seems. So um, if you aren't familiar with the Nutcracker, I don't know if this is the best place to start. If you are, it definitely gives you a whole nother perspective on that story. And just a little side note, Misty Copeland uh, dances briefly in it. And if you don't know Misty Copeland, she is a principal dancer with American Ballet Theater. And she's incredible. So. I would recommend this movie just to watch Misty Copeland dance briefly, but it is a fun movie. Like I said, I was a little confused, but I'd watch it again. I enjoyed it. Still the Nutcracker. This one is the New York City Ballet performing the ballet, the Nutcracker, with the Tchaik Tchaikovsky music. Ooh, sometimes that's hard to say. Um, this is the one that Macaulay Culkin is in briefly. Um, I kind of ignore the fact that Macaulay Culkin is in this because I'd rather watch the dancing. So if you're sad that you're missing out on going to see the Nutcracker this year, either locally or in New York, then definitely check out this one and you can watch the New York City Ballet perform the Nutcracker. Another performance related one is the Radio City Christmas Spectacular with the Rockettes. I love the Rockettes. I think they're fascinating. It's amazing how they do everything all together and in sync and like their legs are all the same height. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm in awe of them. So this is a recording of um, several of the numbers from their Christmas show that they do at Radio City. So again, if you're missing some of that performance um, stuff that you normally get during this time of year, 
check out this one and, and maybe you too will be in awe of the precision that is the Rockettes. I have a whole new section for you and that is all the various versions of A Christmas Carol. We're gonna start with my favorite one first. I'm up at Christmas Carol. In my opinion, this is the best version of A Christmas Carol that has yet been made. I love the Muppets, they're awesome, but more than that, it's an accurate and, I don't know what the word is, but it's, it's, a, it's a good representation of the story. A lot of Gonzo's lines, Gonzo um, is Charles Dickens, and a lot of his lines are directly from the Charles Dickens book. So it's not like this, this random director's interpretation of A Christmas Carol. Like, it's A Christmas Carol, just with Muppets instead of people and, and music. And there is a little something here to be aware of. Um, the original version of the movie that played in theaters did not have the song that Ebenezer Scrooge's fiance sings to him during the Christmas past section. They had cut that song out when they released it in the theaters. But then when they put it on video for all the kids my age, they put that song in. I'd only ever seen it in video. I never knew the movie without the song until last year when I bought the digital version on Amazon and sat down to watch it and the song was missing and I was so upset not only because like what have you done you've butchered my movie I love this movie what what are you doing but it kind of messes with the flow of the story and you have to guess what happened between these two characters rather than actually seeing it happen and I don't think that's cool like let us have the song Apparently, originally, they thought that the song wouldn't play well with the younger audience. Um, it would be kind of over their head. I think they were underestimating kids, to be honest, but that's neither here nor there. So, the streaming version does not have this song. I, I guess about a week ago, watched a YouTube video where someone else was complaining. Where is this song? Where is this song? And someone said, hey, Disney says they've lost the footage for that. They've lost the reel because the director asked them to put it back and they said, oh, we can't, we can't find it. Stop losing stuff. Like, keep track of where you put things, people. But the BBC came out just the other day with a story that says they have found that reel, they are going to reinstate it, it may not be reinstated in time for this holiday season, but soon, that song will be back on the streaming version. The DVD, as far as I know, has that version. My DVD version at home has that song. I think this one does, but I haven't watched this DVD to be sure. Just letting you know, if you have fond memories of this movie, you may or may not be missing a song when you watch it. Then we have a few more. We have Mickey's Christmas Carol. We have Scrooge with Albert Finney. Um, this one's also a musical. I haven't watched it. I, these people look like they're having lots of fun dancing in the background here. Um, it's either great or it's ridiculous. I'm not sure. Watch it and let me know. Then we have A Christmas Carol, the musical with Kelsey Grammer. And then we have the cover that is perhaps my favorite cover is A Christmas Carol with Patrick Stewart, who looks like he's about to issue a beatdown with that cane. Like, what is going on right now? I love this cover. The back is really fun too. Check out his expression in this picture. <laughs> I love it, I love it. So if you wanna watch A Christmas Carol, we have lots of versions of A Christmas Carol for you to choose from. I have just a couple more. This is gonna be a really long video, I'm sorry. Um, and these are scary Christmas movies. So maybe you're not in for heartwarming, you want something um, colder? I don't know, I'm not sure that's the right way to describe it. First is Krampus. Um, I, it's based on Krampus who is the 
They call him a demonic force of ancient evil intent on punishing non-believers. <laughs> There's actually some legend and mythology about Krampus that you could go into, or you could just watch this movie. I mean, it looks creepy, just the like the claw-ishness going on there. So you've got a family, a dysfunctional family, you got some non-believers. He's going to punish them. Watch out. Then you've got Anna and the Apocalypse. There is a zombie apocalypse in a sleepy town, and Anna is going to fight them off with a candy cane, apparently. I haven't watched this one yet. I think it sounds like a lot of fun, but I think I'd rather watch it after the holidays because I like the warm, fuzzy feelings during the holiday season. But if you're looking for a zombie apocalypse this Christmas, Anna and the Apocalypse is for you. And then one more. We have Black Christmas. This is a new one that we just got. Um, they are calling this a timely take on a cult horror classic. Basically, there's a killer on campus, and he's coming after these sorority girls. So if you're looking for a sorority slasher, Black Christmas is right up your alley. That's all of my Christmas movies for today. Like I said, we have a huge selection of Christmas movies to choose from. So if none of these, you know, struck your fancy, definitely take a look on our, on our catalog and see what else we've got. If any of these are up your alley, you can put them on hold. I'm going to go and check them in in just a minute here, and then they'll be available for you. Remember, you can always request other recommendations through our website. We have a personalized recommendation request form that you can fill out, tell us a little bit about what you're looking for, and we will give you back some ideas of things to read or watch, what have you. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and have a happy holiday season.